let's know the beginning. Okay, the title of, uh, well, well, let me introduce myself. I'm professor of obstetrics gynecology and sub, uh, subspecialty is urogynecology at the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki, Greece. Now retired uh, since uh, two years and I'm uh, working uh, together with a bioclinic in the center of town. So I would like to present this uh, topic because it gave me the, the opportunity to come up with a new way of uh, estimating the exposure to smoke. And I will explain that uh, meanwhile. So cigarette smoking and urinary incontinence in women. And uh, the second part deals with the new calculative method of estimating the exposure to smoke. As I said, my former affili affiliation was the Aristotelian University in Saloniki. My current occupation is bioclinic, a private clinic in the center of town. So let's talk about cigarette smoking. I was a former smoker and thank God I have quit smoking several years ago. And uh, that's very good, I must uh, confess. So cigarette smoking is alleged to be a factor which may lead to urinary incontinence in women, both in stress and urinary incontinence. That's an old topic, and this is uh, uh, been uh, searched uh, several times in the international literature. I don't uh, uh, intend to bring something new in that uh, field but I want to focus on the new calculative method of estimating the exposure to smoke. This is for me the, the, the motive to make this presentation and uh, make this appeal to you. So the primary, primary goal of this study was to examine the relationship between cigarette smoking and urinary continence in adult women. Furthermore, it was scheduled to investigate whether there is an association between the degree of exposure to smoke and a particular type of urinary incontinence. We uh, have, uh, in, there were 80 women enrolled uh, who were incontinent as this was the study group. And the control group was uh, 80 women without uh, incontinence. The demogra demographic data was were similar in both groups. Uh, the incontinent group was uh, examined uh, by eurodynamic means. And the important thing is that while de dealing with uh, this topic, because this topic has been examined uh, throughout the years and uh, the correlation between uh, urinary incontinence and uh, cigarette smoking is uh, well established. But as I said, I want to focus on this uh, new um, approach to estimate the exposure to smoke. And I would like to hang on for a while on this table because I will explain why. Um, both are, in both groups, patients were asked about their smoking behavior. And the most smokers were found in the uh, incontinent group. So this gave us the idea, especially me as former uh, smoker, to uh, focus more on the tar and nicotine consumption of uh, the smokers. And I think this uh, procedure is more accurate. And this, this is why I am presenting it now to you. Uh, until now, as I know, the overall exposure to smoke was uh, like 
packs of cigarettes per day. Well, packs of cigarettes per day is not accurate enough. And uh, that's why we divided the smokers in heavy current smokers and light current smokers, which means they both can uh, smoke the same amount of cigarettes per day, let's say 20 and 20, but heavy car current smokers smoke a heavier uh, cigarette, let's say Marlboro, with a more tar consumption and nicotine consumption. By contrast, light current smokers uh, smoke a lighter cigarette, and they are not exposed as much as the, as the heavy current smokers. So, the, the, me, uh, the, the, th the, thing, the thing is to focus on the tar and nicotine consumption. And we came up with a, a third group of smokers because, uh, you know, smokers have uh, uh, change their mind often and they can start or stop smoking and start again, etc. They show a different uh, and varying uh, smoking behavior. And we could uh, or should take this situation also into account. And as we see, stop start smokers, they have also tar consumption and nicotine consumption. You see, uh, this uh, was calculated in grams because as, I, as, as we see the sentence at the bottom of the table, tar or nicotine content, content of each cigarette was uh, calculated in milligrams, of course. And this was per cigarette, the tar and nicotine content, content, uh, content times consumed cigarettes per day, times duration of consumption in years. So if you all this add up for an individual, you come up in the range of grams. And so you can accurate, more accurate, let's say more accurate, uh, estimate the exposure of an individual to smoke. So let's give you an example. You have somebody who smokes uh, 20 Marlboros per day. Okay, you can uh, estimate the exposure by multiplying the content in tar and nicotine of one cigarette by 20. So you have the daily exposure. And you multiply this with uh, one year or several years and so you come up with a total consumption in tar and nicotine. And so you have the exposure of uh, this individual. Let's say he shows a different a varying uh, smoking behavior and he, he changes the brand. And this is a matter which uh, I would like to uh, take into account. He changes the brand and smokes instead of Marlboro, some other brand of cigarettes, let's say can. So you have to calculate again the nicotine and tar consumption for this particular brand. Summing it up so you can come up with more accurate data concerning this smoking problems, because it is a problem. You know, as I said, I was a former smoker, so I can understand and I am familiar with the smoking behavior of other fellow men and people. So, uh, let's go on. Smokers, as I said, can shift from one brand to another, thus having different intervals of varying levels of exposure. And one must consider the varying tar and nicotine content of cigarettes and the intervals during which a particular brand has been preferred. 
So we have to take this into account also. Back to our study. Uh, group A included eight, 80 individuals. And uh, we have, uh, you see here the numbers, the smokers and non-smokers. Most of them were smokers, 62.5%. There is a tendency towards Earth's incontinence, but these are uh, small numbers to make any conclusions out of this. But anyway, is something that I repeat, gave us the opportunity to, be, to deal more accurately with the uh, exposure to smoke for those people. So let's go on. And in the continent group, you have uh, less smokers than in the other group, heavy uh, current smokers, light current smokers, and the third group stop start smokers. Why is uh, cigarette smoking and urinary incontinence uh, have appeared to be two independent health problems? According to Bump and McLeish, women who had previously smoked had a 2.2 fold increase, and women who currently smoke had a 2.4 fold increase in the risk of genuine stress incontinence. Why is that? Regarding the, the relation between smoking and incontinence, there are several plausible explanations ranging from sphincteric, neurologic, and anatomic damage caused by violent traffic. Furthermore, one should consider smoking's adverse effects on collagen synthesis, on blood vessels, and estrogen levels. For example, smoking has been shown to directly interfere with collagen synthesis. And, uh, Concerning the anti-estrogenic hormone effects, smoke could adversely affect the quality of collagen and decrease smooth muscle tone. So, uh, adding, adding this all up, I must conclude. An aspect of this study considered not worthy is the, as I said before, the initiation for development of a new calculated method of estimating the exposure to smoke. Until recently, the smoking behavior of an individual was based upon cigarettes or packs per day consumption and the life consumption. Yet while dealing with the material of the study, that's why I am presenting, uh, I am presenting this to you, a major factor is missing the varying tar and nicotine content of each particular cigarette according to their preferred tobacco brands. So consumers of brands differing in tar and nicotine content are to a different degree exposed to smoke, even if they consume, consume a similar number of cigarettes per day. Another misleading factor in previous calculations is that these calculations presume a constant smoking behavior, yet smoking behavior can vary significantly. Smokers can shift for several reasons from one brand to another, thus having different intervals of varying levels of exposure. Of exposure. So, as I said, they show a different uh, smoking behavior in the term. What is the message of all this? Advising patients with uh, urinary incontinence should certainly include the advice to quit smoking anyway for several years and uh, reasons. And this is a particular reason, as I have uh, said before. Because of that, uh, smoking behavior, as I said, can change. 
and we have to define the, the exposure to smoke with better means. And this, I think, that's why I'm presenting this, is a quite accurate and good tool to assess the whole issue. So that was it. Was it. Uh, I would like to thank you for your attention. Here you have on the left a uh, very nice picture of my hometown, Thessaloniki. And on the right, you have happy people working at the Bioclinic Thessalonica, Greece. Thank you very much for your attention.